In the headlines, Rocky Mount police make a major bust of area prostitutes and their alleged johns. And at least three teenagers face serious charges after they were accused of robbing a cab driver. Also, the fight begins. Both Nash County residents and the city of Wilson begin the legal battle to keep Sanderson Farms out of the area. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak starting now. From WHIG TV, this is News Break 31. Now, here's Marie Torres. Hello, and thanks for tuning in to WHIG TV News Break, your voice in the community. I'm Marie Torres. First in our crime report, Rocky Mountain Police make a major bust of area prostitutes and their alleged Johns. Initiated this month in an undercover operation was Operation Double Trouble that addressed prostitution within neighborhoods and had identified hotel areas that have had reports of prostitution. Out of those arrested were four Rocky Mount women ranging in ages 27 to 51. They are Sandy Lynn Parks, Tammy Denise Battle, Barbara Jean Thompson, and Lorraine Jacobs. Morris. Parks and Battle are charged with soliciting for oral sex. Battle also with Thompson and Morris are charged with soliciting for prostitution. Twelve alleged Johns from Rocky Mount, Whitakers, Pine Tops, Tarboro, and even in Weldon were also arrested. The men are Calvin Harrison, Frederick Parker, Timothy Tillery, George Van Vallen Jr., Sean Obley, Shaquan Powell, William Nicholson Jr., John Colbert Jr., Johnny Williams, Anthony Lester, Kenneth Gumpton, and William Edmondson. They range from 21 to 52 years of age. In addition to being charged for soliciting for prostitution and or oral sex, some of those men were charged with possession of marijuana and driving while license revoked. Police say in general, a number of other criminal offenses normally coincide with prostitution. That includes assault, drug activity, robbery, and theft. At least three teenagers face serious charges after they were accused of robbing a cab driver. According to Rocky Mount Police, around 9.30 Sunday morning, a 37-year-old driver for the United Cab Company picked up the three suspects, 18-year-old Tavares Hudson, 17-year-old Jamal Johnson, and a 15-year-old male. It's alleged one of these teens physically assaulted the driver, brandished a firearm, and demanded money before fleeing the cab on foot. Through further investigation, the teen were identified and charged with robbery with a dangerous weapon and conspiring to commit an armed robbery. Hudson and Johnson received $40,000 secure bonds. They were transported to the Nash County Jail. Meanwhile, the 15-year-old was charged on juvenile petition and was transported to the Pitt County Juvenile Detention Center. And two Rocky Mountain men were are, are linked to a home break-in. Police continue to search for the men who are 24-year-old Tavares Pittman and 25-year-old Travis Whitehead. It's believed Pittman and Whitehead broke into a home on Dexter Street nearing midnight Tuesday. The two face charges of second-degree burglary and larceny after breaking and entering. If you know the, their whereabouts, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 252-977-1111. In other news, despite North Carolina Department of Transportation's efforts of building a median on a Rocky Mount Road to be safer for motorists, our own video footage begs to differ. On a drive down Winstead Avenue with camera in hand near lunchtime Tuesday, WHIGTV Sandra Smith and Herb Greenberg captured this video where they almost got into an accident while attempting to make a U-turn at Winstead Avenue and Hunter Hill Road. Listen in. Oh, look at this. Look, when you make a U-turn. Well, you car. don't put in front of the car. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm showing you that I'm about to have a wreck. I'm showing you. Look at that. Look. One, two, three directions. 
For over a year now, businesses along Winsett Avenue have protested DOT's building of the median, saying this would block patrons from making left turns into their businesses, hence making their business possibly lose its customers. Tuesday, our station actually witnessed the entrance of Freedom Credit Union complete, completely blocked, though it was unblocked later on in the day, perhaps to make way for dump trucks going in and out of the road. Rush hours seem to be somewhat hazardous as well as drivers making left turns at Hunter Hill Road try to avoid road cones while waiting for other passing vehicles. As always with this story, we'll be keeping you up to date with the latest. If you have a story about the construction and would like to talk to us, email me at marie.whigtv at gmail.com or call 252-885-1814. When we return today on Newsbreak, the city of Rocky Mount gets more legal backbone to contest a merger between two electric providers, and the city isn't the only ones going to court. We'll have more on the fight to keep Sanderson Farms out of of Nash County. Stay with us. This Memorial Day, while we honor our troops, Davenport Auto Park salutes you with a Memorial Day weekend sales celebration. Right now, every Honda, Buick, and GMC is priced at employee price. Drive home your new car for up to $6,000 below dealer invoice. And get dealership for life, a free lifetime warranty, free maintenance, and more with every car sold. Davenport's Memorial Day weekend sales celebration going on now at the Auto Park. Just look for the red tags. We're your news team bringing it home to you with meteorologist Fred Holtzworth, anchor Marie Torres, sports reporter Edward Green, and Matt Havitt, our studio guy. WHIG TV Newsbreak, your voice in the community. The Country Inn and Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn and Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Chavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. Welcome back to WHIG TV Newsbreak. I'm Marie Torres. In a 5 to 1 vote, Rocky Mount City Council approved the use of $25,000 for a lawyer that would contest the merger of two of the state's largest electric providers. Though some council members say that these providers, Duke and Progressive Energy, have had customers who pay lower utility rates than those in the city of Rocky Mount, some still say that the city would stand more to gain by opposing such a consolidation. The council met in several closed sessions leading up to the recent announcement this week. We'll be keeping you up to date on this matter. This week, a North Carolina Superior Court judge ruled that several Nash County residents could remain as plaintiffs, pursuing one of two lawsuits against Nash County, alleging county officials purposely rezoned land to lure America's fourth largest chicken producer, Sanderson Farms. Monday, Judge Russell Duke Jr. ruled that four residents who reside near the proposed site on NC Highway 97 and Interstate 95 would be recognized as legitimate plaintiffs. However, it was a different story for the city of Wilson, who also was a part of the lawsuit. In that case ruled on Friday, Duke ruled that the city had no standing in either of the two zoning lawsuits, stating after further review of the law and evidence, Wilson has failed to establish that it has standing to be a plaintiff in either the first or second lawsuit. The city of Wilson may appeal the judge's decision, delaying a 
future final action in the matter. Though in spring 2010, Sanderson Farms and Nash County Commissioners expressed great interest in bringing the plant to Nash County, no final okay has been issued by either party. And a local longtime businessman is highly esteemed. Tuesday during the 17th annual Northeastern Entrepreneur Roundtable Banquet held at Rose Hill Conference Center in Nashville, Lige Dautridge of Dautridge Sales Company and Longstreet Wide Format Printing in Rocky Mount received the 2011 Near Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Dautridge, who was also a Near Entrepreneur finalist in 2001, was among four other entrepreneurs businesses nominated earlier this month, known through the announcement of the Roundtable's chairman, B. Mayo Body Sr. Here's a look at Daughtry's acceptance of this award. Be here without the employees that we have. Uh, we'd like to recognize uh, Scott Joseph, uh, our operations manager, and, and Bethany Theron, that run, runs the, uh, the live format printing. Very honored to uh, receive this award. Here. I want to honor the other finalists, uh, by some amazing companies. If you go through and look at the list, they're just amazing. I'm so proud to be part of the Rocky Mountain area, which includes Edgecombe, Nash, and 70 other in the Northeastern Park uh, Chamber. Uh, we've got many great businesses, great people. We certainly have our challenges. Um, and, and I'm certainly proud of, of our company. But one thing I'm very proud of is how many of us we get involved in our community. An important part of what I think is um, philanthropy and being involved because we're not going to improve anything unless we are involved. And I'm going to do a couple of plugs right now because they did mention funding for charities. We got until May 31st to keep on giving. <laughs> in, in, in two years, uh, in two years, we've raised over $700,000. Um, we'll have over a million dollars, which 100% of that money goes to our area to benefit all the great things that happen in our community. So I encourage if you're not involved with anything, get involved. Many of you are, and I appreciate that. Um, and then also, I can't I'd be remiss without, because there's a table back there with uh, a bunch of folks uh, that, that I work with, but um, Rocky Mountain Academy, we're getting ready. We're on our journey to get into the digital age. If you've ever supported Rocky Mountain Academy, if you're involved in Rocky Mountain Academy, if, um, if, if you just love Rocky Mountain, we need your money. We've got to raise $200,000 because we're going to do, eventually, we're going to get to a one-to-one -one for all our kids in the computers and we're going to do it right. Because education is important so our kids can come back to Rocky Mountain and to surrounding areas and be a part of our community. Because we, the worst thing that we can do is have our kids go through and then when they go to college and they get out, they don't come back to our area. So anyway, I'm very proud and honored. Thank you to um, Mr. Body, and, and, and I also want to recognize the great things that Nier does. Thank you to uh, the, to the folks who came by. It was, it was, it was an honor. And, and I was not the 86 class; I was a 93 class. I did half of these. So, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Starting, started in 1974 as a distributor of pressure and temperature instrumentation, today Dautridge Sales Company works with a long list of companies nationally. Dautridge Sales maintains a $2 million inventory of a wide variety of products. Coming up next, it's sports and weather, but as we go to break, check out these adorable pets who need loving homes.
Home Trends in Rocky Mount is moving to an all-new location. Now, all inventory must be sold in a giant million-dollar moving liquidation. It's all being sacrificed regardless of cost or loss because selling furniture is better than moving furniture. Don't miss the giant million-dollar moving liquidation at Home Trends. This Memorial Day, while we honor our troops, Davenport Auto Parks salutes you with a Memorial Day weekend sales celebration. Right now, every Honda, Buick, and GMC is priced an employee price. Drive home your new car for up to $6,000 below dealer invoice. And get dealership for life, a free lifetime warranty, free maintenance, and more with every car sold. Davenport's Memorial Day weekend sales celebration going on now at the Auto Park. Just look for the red tags. Home Trends in Rocky Mount is moving to an all-new location. Now, all inventory must be sold in a giant million-dollar moving liquidation. It's all being sacrificed regardless of cost or loss because selling furniture is better than moving furniture. Don't miss the giant million-dollar moving liquidation at Home Trends. The Country Inn and & Suites is your home away from home with a staff that always treats you as family. If you or your church or company has visitors, give them a great Rocky Mount welcome with a special discount on their overnight or extended stay. Not only is the Country Inn & Suites a comfortable place, we'll spoil them with fresh cookies and complimentary breakfast. We are filled with luxuries like an indoor pool, fitness center, and a guest laundry. The business center includes a boardroom, connection to high-speed internet, and catering for meetings is always available. Call me, Donna Vachavis, at 252-442-0500 for a tour and or to set up your corporate rate. You're always welcome as family in the country, country and in suites, rocking out. It's now time to look at our holiday weekend weather and more with WHIG-TV meteorologist Fred Holdsworth. Thunderstorms will stay generally to our west throughout the afternoon and the evening tonight and we'll see that that will come back into our area sometime tomorrow but nothing severe expected as we see right now. Let's go to our forecast map and see what's going on on the forecast and the severe staying well to our west through the mountains and maybe even into the foothills we'll have a slight chance of some severe weather today but well away from the coastal plain the severe weather extends all the way from the Gulf Coast up through New England covering the eastern Great Lakes and the Appalachian area of the eastern United States. Rain will be on in the area from Georgia westward out to Missouri but thankfully they won't have any severe weather to deal with today. They've been dealing with it uh, for the first part of the week and that area has now shifted eastward a bit but we uh, think most of this is going to be severe thunderstorms. The isolated tornado possibility probably up in New York and Pennsylvania. Going farther to the west, a ridge of high pressure in control here. And then as we go farther to the west, snow in the higher elevations of the Rockies. The cold front pushing down with low pressure moving along it, this will trigger some rain and thunderstorms in the lower elevations of the Rockies with rain found along the Pacific West or the Northwest coast of Oregon and Washington. Well, let's take a look now at our forecast and see what we can expect. Today will be sunny with a high of 94. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low of 67. Chance of showers and thunderstorms with a high of 90. On Friday, Friday night, chance of showers and thunderstorms continue with a low of 66. Saturday, chance of showers and thunderstorms with a high of 87. 
Saturday night, chance of showers and thunderstorms with a low of 66. Sunday, sunny, 90 degrees for the high. Sunday night, clear with a low of 66. And for Monday, sunny with a high of 93 and a low of 67 on Monday night. Our high temperature yesterday, 93. Our low this morning was 72. And that's a look at your Rocky Mount weather. Now back to you. Thank you, Fred. Now here with me to talk sports is Edward Green. How about that weather, though? It's going to be crazy, <laughs> especially for this Friday. You know, if there's any games on Friday, you guys might want to take a raincoat or something just mm -hmm. to make sure in case. But it looks like it's going to start off next week. Very good for yes. the Memorial Day weekend. All right. All right. Well, anyway, as we draw towards the end of May and get these showers out of the way, the state high school playoffs are entering their final phase. Now, two of our teams were in action in softball on Tuesday, but only one of them survived to the fourth round. Nash Central won a nail-biter 2 to nothing at home against South Central and will play D.H. Conley in Winterville on Friday at 7 o'clock. The Bulldogs' first round game, it's the Bulldogs' first road game of the playoffs. I visited Nash Central this week and head coach Gary Smith to talk about the win, playing Conley on Friday, and what a win would mean for the program. So we are out here at Nash Central with softball coach Gary Smith. And Gary, you guys had a really big win Tuesday night in the third round of the state playoffs. Um, it was definitely a huge win. You know, when you, when you get this far, every team you play it gets better and better and better. Um, you can't afford any mistakes. You know, we made one small mistake. Um, and other than that, you know, they made one mistake on a on a pitch and that's what cost them the game so uh, both teams had only four hits and both teams played good defense it was just a matter of, you know finally we get a break you know to win the game you know last couple of years we've had breaks go against us so it was it was a nice feeling you guys have played your first three games at home has that been important to you guys success i know in the first round you had kind of an easy go of it but as you've gone on and as you say the competition has gotten tougher what does that mean to have home field advantage so far uh, it's definitely a big advantage. I mean, you don't have to travel, you know, have like I had to make a three hour ride South Central, a one hour ride, you know, just being here and going through your normal routine uh, is a big advantage. And you, you got obviously we have more people here than we would on the road. So it's it's definitely an advantage. Now you are going to be facing D.H. Conley this Friday in Winterville. Uh, so your first true road game of the playoffs. How are you going to get your girls prepared for that? Uh, we're going to go about our normal activities, you know, uh, we're not treating it any differently, you know. Uh, everybody can be beat. You know, you got to have, you got to play. You got to have a good game, and uh, hopefully that's what's going to happen for us. You know, it doesn't doesn't take but a few mistakes to knock somebody out. What's going to be key on Friday against D.H. Conley to get into the state semifinals? Probably two things: hitting hitting the ball, hitting their pitcher, because um, they got a good pitcher. They got one pitcher going to ECU next year, and they got another one that's going to Pitt Community College. Um, and not making mistakes, not getting rattled, because. Um, they're very aggressive on the bases, and that's what did Hunt in last night was a few mistakes in one inning where they were um, running the bases and being aggressive, and, and it cost them. What would it mean for you and this team to be able to make the regional, or the regional finals and then the state finals? It would be huge. I mean, no, no, no team here at school you know, has gotten that far. We've had a couple of basketball teams get to the sectionals. Um, we're in the sectionals, so this is the first time. Uh, for most teams here, it is definitely the first time for us, and uh, it would be a huge accomplishment, you know, not only for our team, but for the school in general, only having been here, you know, eight, this is our ninth year. With that kind of pressure mounting, how do you keep your girls loose during the game? Um, I don't think it's any pressure. I mean, they know, you know, uh, they know what they got to do. They've been playing together for so long um, on travel ball and, and so on that, uh, you know, it's just kind of an everyday thing with them. I don't think there's any more pressure on them for this game than there is for any other game. Uh, they know what they have to do and you know they try and, and try and do that. Once again here are your scores from Tuesday. As we mentioned Nash Central beat South Central two to nothing and unfortunately Southern Nash's dream run as an underdog came to an end at Southwest Randolph in a tough 12 nothing loss. The Firebirds beat up on teams early as a four seed but could not pull off another upset in Southwest Randolph. So the fourth round is set up in part of the bracket with Nash Central traveling to D.H. Conley in Winterville Friday night at 7. The winner will play next week in the regional championships in Raleigh. 
So it will be a tough game for the Bulldogs, Marie, but D.H. Conley is one of the best teams remaining in this playoffs. And, uh, but it's only an hour right away, so mm -hmm. if any of you guys want to go out and support them for heading out on your Memorial Day trips uh, this Friday night, 7 o'clock, uh, cheer them on. Maybe we can get a team going out to uh, Walnut Creek and Raleigh for the regional right. finals. Well, sounds great. Well, thank you so much, no Edward. Problem, that's all for us here today on Newsbreak. Join us next week for more news that's impacting our community. For WHIG-TV, I'm Marie Torres. Happy Memorial Day.